Hello and welcome. My name is Partho Majumdar. So far in the course, we have gone through what are regression models. We have discussed specifically three regression models that is linear regression, regression using random forest algorithm and regression using standard ve support vector machines SVMs. There are other regression models also like decision tree regression models etc. Once you understand the basics of regression models, you should be able to uh, apply and create any other regression models which is available as well. Now let's get down to implementing these regression models using Python. In Python we will utilize Kikit Learn to implement these regression models. There are other libraries also available in Python for implementing re uh, regression models like TensorFlow, Keras etc. However in this course we will focus on Kikit Learn. What I will do is that I will show you the commands and the libraries and then we will go to Jupyter Notebook and see them in action. So first, before we can start creating our model, we require to read the data. Now for reading the data, we require the library pandas. So we can use pandas to read our data. In pandas, there is a function called readCSV. Our data happens to be in a text file. So in the function readCSV, we have to give the name of the file from which we require to read the data. Then this particular file which we are having has a separator called tab. So the, it is tab separated, it is not comma separated. So we can specify the separator by saying separator is equal to tab. There are other parameters of read CSV function also which you can explore on your own. So when we say pd.readcsv, we can read the file which contains the data and store it in a data frame. Here I have named the data frame as df underscore raw. So here we are in Jupyter Notebook. So first we have to import the libraries. You can notice here I have imported the library pandas. So this is here. This is what is important here. There are other libraries also important which we will not discuss right now. So I first run this to import the libraries. Now the libraries are imported. Once the library panda is imported, I can use the commands read CSV, which is here. So to the read CSV command, I am giving the full path name of the file that I am going to read. Then I am saying that separator is equal to tab. This file happens to have separator tab. Let's have a look at it. So you can see that it, this file, the fields are separated by a tab. And also notice that this file does not have a header. So that's why in our command we have said header is equal to none. Since there is no header, after reading the data, we will assign the field names like I have done here using this command rename. So let's run this and see what our data frame looks like. So once we run this, we notice that the data is read into our data frame and the data frame looks like this. We can see the shape of the data frame that is it's, it's got 1503 rows and six columns. Once we have our data, we will have to split it into test set and the training set. So now we start using the Skikit Learn library. The Skikit Learn library is referred to in Python as sklearn. So in sklearn, we have a library called model selection. Under model selection, there is a function called test train, train test split. So we can use this train test split function to create the training set and the test set. Now we use the train test split function. We have to give the data frame name which contains our data. And then we have to give what is the training size. The training size I have given here is 0.7. This means that 70% of the data will go to the training set. The remaining 30% will go to the test set. Now to randomize this splitting, we have to give a seed and the seed is given by the parameter random state. So you can give any seed. I have given the seed here as 42. So now with this function, the training set and the, the test set will be created. The training set will be stored in the data frame called DF train and the test set will be stored in the data frame called DF test. So then once we have the training set and test set, we can create our labels. That is the white train. That is the labels which we which is going to be used for supervised learning. And I can only retain the dependent variable in the data frame which contains the labels. So this is my dependent variable. So I only keep this as my y, y train. And then in the x data, I remove the dependent variable and only keep the independent variables. So that's why I'm dropping this variable from here in the training set and making the X train. The same thing I do for Y test and X test as well. So now we are in Jupyter Notebook. 
Notice here that I have imported the library model selection and from that I have taken train test split and then I'm using train test split to create my training set and test set. So let's run this command. So when you run this command, you notice that the command has run now. So if I create a cell here and if I say show me df underscore train, notice that I have got df underscore train. Now if I see x underscore train, notice that I have only the independent variables in x underscore train and the dependent variable has been removed. I can do the same and take, check it out for y underscore train also. So I say y underscore train. So notice that I only have my dependent variable in y underscore train. So once the training and test set sets have been created, we can proceed to create our regression model. So first regression model we will create is a linear regression model. For creating the linear regression model, we can use the function linear regression from the library sklearn.linear model. So this is the library. So if we import this, then I can create an instance of linear regression by saying linear regression. I can give it a parameter saying normalize is equal to true. So if I give this parameter, the data will be normalized before the regression model is created. So once the instance has been created for the regression linear regression, that is this is the variable, I can say lr.fit to create my model. To, fit, to create the model, I say this is my training, this is my x data and this is my y data. x data basically contains my independent variables and this contains my dependent variable. So this is the supervised learning. So I, when I say fit, the model is created. Once the model is created, I can use the model for making predictions. So I can say lr.predict to predict based on the x data what will be the y, y data, y prediction that it will create. So now let's head to Jupyter's to, uh, notebooks to see it in action. So here we are in Jupyter notebook, notice here that I have imported the library linear model. From that I have taken linear regression. So now I can create my linear regression model by running this cell. So I have done that. So now it is created, the linear regression model is ready. So if I want to check, it has also done the prediction. So if I want to check, I can say, say y underscore train underscore spread dot head. So you can So you can see that the predictions have been made by the linear regression model that we have created. This is the array, that's why I didn't have the function called head. Just like we created the linear regression model, we can create the random forest regression model also. So for this, we have a library called sklearn.ensemble. Under this, we have the library function random forest regression. So we can use this. So we will import the random forest regression regressor after importing this, we can use this to create the random forest regression instance. But what we will do is that we will scale the data before we do the random forest implementation. So for scaling, we will use a standard scalar. The standard scalar is available in the library sklearn.preprocessing. So we have imported the standard scalar from there. So we do the standard scaling first. And after scaling, we will do make the random forest regressor model. Now to execute these two commands in a sequence, we require to make a pipeline. So we require the function make pipeline. Now the make pipeline is available in sklearn.pipeline. So we import this library as well. So now we create the random forest instance, RF, that is, which says make a pipeline, first analyze, do the scaling, and then implement the random forest regressor model. So once we have done that, then we can call the fit function to create the model. Once the model is created, we can call the predict function to make the predictions. So now we are back in Jupyter Studio. Now you can see that I have imported the library random forest regressor, standard scalar and make pipeline. And then I'm making the pipeline where I'm first scaling and then creating the regressor. So then I fit the model and I make the prediction. So if I run this, it should run and create the random forest regression model. So that now it is done. So you, I can check my prediction. So if I just say y train pred, 
it should give me what the predictions it has made. So there you see it has made the predictions according to the random forest algorithm. Just like we created the linear regression model and the random forest model, we can create the model for support vector machine also. For this we require the library sklearn.svm and inside that we have a function called svr that is support vector regressor. So we can import this library. Then just like we did for random forest, we will first scale and after scaling we will make the model. So we will use standard scalar and then we will use SVR. SVR can take parameters. This we have discussed in the discussion on standard vector machines. So these parameters we can give based on which the uh, model will be tuned. And then we will create the model which is the variable we have named as SVR. Once the instance is created, we can use the function fit to build the model. And once the model is been built, we can use the predict function to make the predictions. So we are back in Jupyter Notebook once again. So you can see that I have put the same command what I showed you on the slide. I import the support vector regressor then make the pipeline. Inside the pipeline, I put the scalar and then I make the support vector regressor. Then I fit the model and then make predictions using the model. So let's run it and see what I get. So there the model has run and now if you see the predictions what it has made so we can see that so notice that the predictions are made if you have noticed little bit carefully we will anyway see it again that the predictions made by all the models are different so there is a requirement for building multiple models because one model will be better than the other so we will see that soon so far we have seen how to create the models. So once the models are created, we require to compute the matrix metrics. So now matrix can be computed by using the sklearn.matrix library. So if we import this, then it has got a lot of functions, like it has got functions like mean absolute error, mean square error, median absolute error, explained variance score, R square score. So there are a lot of, lot of functions. The basic thing to look at in this library is that if the function name ends with the error, this is a value which should be as less as possible. So all the function names which end with error, the value should be less for a model to be considered as good. And all the functions which end with a value with a, with a name score, these values should be as high as possible for the model to be considered as a good model. So now let's just see this in action in Jupyter Notebook. So here we are back in Jupyter Notebook. So you notice that I have imported the library sklearn.metrics and I have named it as SM. Then I can print the values of different functions like mean absolute error, mean square error, etc. Let's run this and see what output we get. So notice that we, it gives me that the mean absolute error for this particular regression is 2.68, etc. So I have got all the scores what I require. Then I could have, we, so far we have already run the models on our trading data. So I can run my model on my test data also. That is, I can do the predict on my test data, x test, to get my predicted values of y. And once I get the predicted values of y, I can compare the predicted values of y with the actual values of y which I stored if, when I did the tra train test split. So once I've done that, notice that I'm getting a R square score of 0.52 or 